Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome to the Nonsense Brewery for January 14th, 2021. My name's Alex, one of your hosts for episode 69. Nice. We have four <laughs> drinks and hosts for you today. Yo! Uh, Dan, what are you drinking? Uh, oh, it's funny you picked me first. You know what? We'll do this. Uh, I'm drinking some habanero lime moonshine that my uncle's friend made. Whoa! Nice. That sounds pretty cool. Nice. That boy very, is, is from Tennessee. Bad. That boy is from Tennessee. That's all facts. I got to say right there. I'm going to very lightly sip on it. Big you got that, got that Ooh. shine? Dude, that was a pretty Ooh. big yes. sip. I'm not going to lie. That, that, yeah, it's good. It's got like a, he's good for, a hint of he's lime good for to the it. the rest of the episode. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be yeah. blackout. <laughs> That's like drinking Everclear, isn't it? No, mm. it's not. I, I don't think it's like true moonshine. It's like, you know... Like yeah, but it's it's in a mason jar. <laughs> so, God knows. Uh, in CISO, what's up? What is up, guys? Um, speaking of hard, I've got a similar to Mike's hard. I got a Corona hard seltzer, limonada. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's a classic lemon lime we got here. Found some in the fridge when I returned from my uh, time in Charleston. And I'm excited to, you know, go to a place where things are stocked, you know, instead of a hotel where I have to stock things okay. myself. Nice. Cheers. Nice. Salud. Refreshing. Exactly what I wanted. Jerome, my guy. What yo, is up? yo, yo. What's up? Glad to be back. Uh, I'm sipping on a Red Bull today. Ah, just kidding. It's a Michelob Ultra. It just looks like a Red Bull can. <laughs> no? Okay. What the fuck? Uh, I feel like it's the same colors, right? Silver and blue. Let's, let's see. Silver and blue. Mm, well, if no. I if that I like the Mike Ultra, it definitely looks like a Mike Ultra. Okay. Yeah, it's anyway, a Mike Ultra. Mick Ultra. Uh, glad to be back, and uh, you know, as always, saving the best for last, Mister Alex Kadiri. Tell us what you're sipping on today. I'm let's drinking uh, a beer from Inciso's very own Tampa. It's a Cigar City Brewing Highlight. Ah, I love it. Mm. Ooh, for it's those solid. not watching, it. not watching the video, it like splashed when you open that can. It did. So it that's did. when you know it's like uh, that's when you so know it's many, like fizzy. I think so action. many, uh, so many innuendos for episode sixty nine. You know, mm. he says getting hard over there. Alex is getting <laughs> splashed on his face in the splash zone. But <laughs> anywho, enough distractions. Like I said, this is the Nonsense Brewery, <laughs> where every week we'll be coming to provide to you some of our own comments on world topics, interesting beers, or drinks, where you can listen or watch to us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or podcast services around the globe. Thank you for having us. Um, yeah, boys, thank you. Thank you to the live studio audience. Mm. Ah. Rest we'll in peace, Bob Saget. Oh piece. man, that's so sad, dude. Yeah. Did we have to start the podcast out on a sad note? On a somber note. Might as well. Might as well. Ugh. Well, I can make it funny because, like, on Entourage, the dude was a savage. I don't He's know if that was savage. him on real life. Bob dude. Saget was yeah. in Entourage. He's a dirty yes. comic. Dirty. Bro, he is. He is like. He's also he is, America's he's dad. Not, that's what I'm saying. He ain't America's dirty he, dad. He ain't dad. He's, he's like a, daddy. Yeah, he's like daddy, and not in an Entourage, bro. Man. It's kind of. I was not expecting that. I if didn't you, know. If you ever listen to any of a stand up, you're going to be like, this is not this is not the Bob Saget yeah, I know yeah. from Full House. No, I feel like you guys are saying the same thing. You guys are both saying that he's like super like he's raunchy, dirty. right? Yeah. Correct. Oh, bye, Dan. Right. You'll be we back. lost the guy. Oh, man. This is going to be a nightmare to edit. Nah. Okay. No, it won't. Um, it, it fixes by itself. Okay. If I can bet. Once he joins. But it will. yeah, yeah, Alex, I, I'm with you because I feel like 100% Bob Saget is like, uh, if you watch his stand up, he's like super raunchy. But his like thing that he's known for is like full house. Like yeah. he's like America's dad, you know? Um, it's just jarring. Dad. You know, like how it you, is. You, you almost get railroaded into like those certain positions of, of like different, different acting. Wow. Railroading into certain positions. Nice. And what I mean is like how, you know, Michael Sarah, he's always going to be like the nerd and all of like all of For the sure. comedian movies. But the dude, where... the dude's yeah. intense. Exactly. The dude's a savage. Like you yeah. ever hear him? He just oh, freaks, bro. He's a freak. But. And I freaked it. I think, I, I think you like that energy though, right? Isn't that nice to like, you? the whole point of being an actor is that you are in a way showing a talent to be something that you're not. 
Yes. Right? Imagine if it, – it's not bad if you yourself can act and play yourself and then become famous like that. But where's the challenge? I think you know? I think the the actor that best portrays like every every aspect is probably Tom uh, Tom Hanks because like he could be funny he could be serious he can be uh, okay you know all over the place and like he was especially he, American actors for yeah, sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I um, Ameri- like as an American actor I think right. some British actors also do that too but I agree here's here is a controversial thought but I I truly believe it. Um, recently up and coming like chameleon of an actor able to do anything I feel is like, uh, is Kevin Hart. I think I said this in like a couple episodes ago, but I don't know if you guys watch true story on Netflix, dude, so good. And it's like, you know, he, for so long was just like only a comedian, but then he started doing like more of these like serious kind of movies and shows and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's so good. I feel like it's so hard to like get the audience out of that mindset that he's doing a comedian, like a comedy, you know, cause like Kevin Hart is a great actor. Like, I mean, he's not, he's not by any means a terrible actor. He, he can be whatever he wants to be, but like whenever you see Kevin Hart on the screen, you're just like, Oh, here comes the funny part. Like, like, I feel like that's going to be like in the back of my, my mind the whole time. I feel, don't you feel like the director needs to do, him justice by like you got to set up the environment you know like if he's coming into a an intense scene you got to make the scene intense right you can't like open it up for discussion about what's about like what's about to go down isn't comedy and if you set him up to do that this this is taking me on another tangent of like something dave Chappelle said about like dresses i don't know if y'all like had like there was this thing where like they dress up certain actors specifically like black actors and like just for the comedic effect or stuff now i'm getting i'm gonna have to let me do my research let's stay on this topic of kevin hart and, I, and i'll be right back okay sorry about that guys sorry about that I'm, not, I'm on a tangent it's this corona hard seltzer damn corona how do we get on kevin hart uh we were talking about bob saget and how like He's a pretty raunchy comic and how it's very abrasive compared to what he is in Full House. And then we're, we got off on like how you, it tends – most actors tend to get railroaded into a certain um, acting gig and mm. it's hard for them to break out of that mold. Thus Kevin Hart. Thus Kevin Hart. Yeah, you see that with a lot of people. It's just sad, like, so, okay, taking it back to Bob Saget, like, he, you know, great, great, I don't know, figurehead to to look up to and stuff, and, like, him and Betty White, it's just, uh, it's sad, man, it's sad. It's a hot take. Yeah, it sucks. It's, it's hard to, bad starts of the year. Whatever. Bad starts of the year, that's okay. Actually, I saw, like, a video today. Um, about David Bowie discussing the internet. And I was like, man, David Bowie was ahead of his time. And I'm like, I didn't know he passed away recently too. So. Wait, what do you mean that for years? David Bowie's been gone for a while. Okay. I I must've heard of that already because yeah, no, it didn't happen this year. No, no, no. It's not like recently. It's just like, it's, it was one of those things where it's like, man, I forgot. I didn't know that he was gone. And like it's, that's gonna happen. You're gonna you're gonna hear about like, man, that actor was really funny. What is he up to now? Like, he's gone. What about Phil Collins? When do you when do you think that's gonna happen? Oh, I don't even want to talk about. <laughs> that was it, a man. random one. That's bad, bad luck. You're just making me uh, think of like, yeah, David Bowie's on that same, you know, like changing it's, music. It's funny that you talk about Phil Collins because like I just watched a video from uh, Matt Parker and Trey. Is it Trey Stone? Matt Stone. Trey, Trey Parker, Parker. Matt Stone. Yeah, and they, how they lost. Um, a Grammy to to Phil Collins. <laughs> they were pissed about it. I don't know. It's funny. They're pissed about it. it. Yeah. What were they nominated for? It was for uh, Canada. It was one of their songs about Canada. Um, uh, I think I know man. what you're talking about. It was like in 1999 or 2000. Right. It was during the um, the movie Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. It's about Canada, guy. I haven't heard I that. Know. It's about Canada, friend, buddy, guy. Mm. 
How have you Love guys it. been? I, but, like, Jerome, I haven't seen you in many years. I know. Years. I was just about to say this, Alex. <laughs> I feel like I haven't seen or talked to you in such a long time. How how you feeling, man? I've been good. I'm I'm feeling pretty good getting off that corona. Uh, mm-hmm. So, like, I'm, I'm finally cleared to go back to work tomorrow. Um, nice. I'm really excited nice. to finally uh, see some other people. Uh, it's been Dan nice. and I were, were talking about this last week, about, like, our corona experiences. It's honestly, it's it's nice to be home and like, so I, I'm here with my best friend. So it, it's been like a, a dream. But like, it's it's kind of you get stir crazy and you're like, all right, let's yeah. go outside. And then you like yeah, you start walking around for. We we picked up Pokemon Go again, and uh, dude, nice. I did as well. <laughs> I did as well. It's fun. It's really fun. Well, so okay. So outside, the- well, I was gonna say walks outside Pokemon Go. I just want to keep track. Let's keep track of the the tips for uh, for uh, dealing through COVID. So yeah, anyway, yeah. Jerome, continue, continue. The uh, the other thing I was going to ask you was, you said that you started playing uh, a new game. Ah, uh, yeah, yep. yep. Do you want to tell us about this? Yeah, I, uh, my brother for Christmas got me Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, which is a great RPG. Okay, really okay. fun. Loved it. It actually got Savannah into Dragon Ball, so we've been watching uh, DBZ Abridged on, on really? YouTube. Really? Yeah. It's wow, awesome. That's impressive. It's awesome. That's impressive. Um, I will say I have also played that game because uh, I I don't remember exactly when it came out, but I got it when it first came out, and fantastic game. Oh, it is. I would honestly argue that it is probably the best Dragon Ball Z game to date because it it's is. like a it's like an open world and it like follows the story, and then if you get the DLC as well, it like bridges into Dragon Ball Super. Um, it's so good. It it really does make you feel like you're freaking Goku. Oh, I love it. I, I it's... actually just beat the Majin Buu saga today. Nice. And we'll start on the next one here in a few minutes. I guess whenever we're done eating dinner. Nice. Um, pretty excited though. Pretty excited though. It, it's it's a very good game. Um, which speaking of which, you guys are Xbox people, right? Mm-hmm. Specifically, Alex, you're you're a big Xbox guy. Did you get slash Are you getting the uh, the new Halo game? Oh, I have it. Yeah, it came on Game Pass. Oh, really? Yeah. The dude's like, oh, I, I have it. Yeah, what awesome. the hell? It's awesome. Okay, that's I nice. was, I was gonna ask how, how good it was because, like, I uh, have never been a big Halo person. Um, have you played um, any of the campaigns for the other Halos at all? No, no. Highly recommend uh, playing it with like couch co-op with someone you love. It's a really good uh-huh. time. Um, Halo Infinite hasn't released couch co-op yet. But what's really cool about the campaign, if, if you played Far Cry, it's very similar to that. Like, this new Halo is very similar to Far Cry. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. Actually, you know, um, speaking of Far Cry, I bought the newest Far Cry game recently, mm-hmm. probably yeah. like two months ago. Um, and I started playing it. I mean, good game, but I feel like the story wasn't engaging enough for me. Yeah, trying because to topple I kept... a, basically the Cuban government, right? But it's not Cuban. Yeah, right, right, right. But it was weird because, like, I... I get in these moods of, like, I'll play it, like, an hour here and there, but then I always end up just, like, putting it down, and then I don't look at it for weeks, you know? And uh, I hate when that happens with video games. Dude, adulting is tough because, like, you you might play an hour, and you're like, you you only play it whenever you really want to play it, right? Yeah. And then then a few weeks go by, and you're like, where the hell was I? There needs to be, like, a, a way for a game to be, like, you can pick it up, play it, drop my mic. Um, uh, pick it up, play it, and then like it's it's easy to get back into where you, you're at for for people who are like us, you know. Like I, I feel like me being on COVID made made me playing this game Kakarot really easy because I could pick it up and just play for hours at a time. When I can't do yeah. that anymore, I literally can't. It's and it's not good for me to right. do that. There's just there's so many responsibilities, not enough time in the day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a lesson here, though, about growing up right there, Alex, what you just said, you know, priorities. Yeah, priorities. I, I, I yeah, mean, and like, some people would prioritize video games over uh, over other things. True. Maybe you're a gamer. <sighs> yeah. But Maybe you're an you aspiring know, gamer. You know, the one thing I would say is, isn't it nice to have had a childhood where if you wanted to game, you'd get that space, you know? I no. think, Wait, I think what, yeah, what is no, your nice. definition of wanted to game there? Like just in your free time or like yeah, whatever. if you wanted if to you do wanted that as a do. career? No, just in your personal time. If you just wanted oh, okay. to game, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like you. you're a kid, you're a teen or whatever, 
your parents like like give you that if space. I had told my mom I wanted to do that as a career she would have slapped the shit out of me yeah but then you know Jerome would have been a uh, you know on the esports like track on the circuit killing it I would have been, on, be the on, the circuit. Circuit, <laughs> been on the circuit bro been on the circuit maybe like, maybe you'd like even have F1. some gamers you say you you'd have some gamers doctor, working for you or a engineer or a lawyer or a pro gamer <laughs> Man, I would or a YouTuber. Don't Fortnite don't YouTube.com slash Jerome Vaz. Don't forget. Don't forget. Over one K subscribers now, so I mean Hey, I'm counting. monetized. Should we should we play this game? Should we guess how much money Jerome's made in the last twenty days? I'll I'd say it. five bucks. Okay. Just to lowball Dan? it. Just lowball it. Ten dollars. Do you have okay. your merchandise website set up yet? That's Not, yet. Money Not yet. That's where the money is. That that is where the money is. Uh, the money I, is. I don't have merch set up yet, unfortunately, <laughs> Alex. Dude. I already, I already know what you could do. You could have like, um, yes. uh, you could have yes. a, a van sneaker, but like on the front of the toe is your beard. Like that's your toe. <laughs> you know, that'd be the silhouette. Okay. I love it. What's, mm. what's your guess, Alex, for how much money um, I've made? Twenty days. Twenty days. I'm gonna say twenty-seven dollars. Ooh, okay. That's close. Alex is close. The what? correct answer was. Forty-one dollars. My man. Damn. Nice. We're hey, working it, guys. My We're man is loaded. I'm, I'm, I'm about, celebrating uh, with you right now. Bro. About about two dollars <laughs> a day. That's that's my current rate. Uh, that's what's up. So right above. So the if you want me line. to do something other than YouTube for twenty-four hours, you got to pay me a minimum of two dollars. That's no. that's, um, <laughs> that's the rate. Your time side, side tangent. One of, one of my coworkers was showing me um, a YouTuber that he watches. And like the YouTuber that he watched, like did a breakdown of like where all of his funds were coming from, because he wanted to be like as transparent as possible. And yeah. He was like, I get all of my money through um, Amazon sponsorships, I think, and like to, to links to where like he's making all the stuff. So he like yeah, he gets yeah, like yeah yeah. So he, I get he some of that. that. And then um, he has his own website as well, to where people can actually buy the stuff that he makes on the YouTube channel. He makes right right buku bucks. Like it's, Dude, it's, there's it's... money to be made there. Yeah, it's uh the different income streams are definitely weird. Like uh I, I too am an Amazon affiliate, but not that I like sell many products on Amazon. And by sell I mean like so as an Amazon affiliate and you don't have to be like a content creator or influencer or anything to make an Amazon affiliate account. Anyone with an Amazon account can be an affiliate, right? It's basically just and, it's it's having the link, right? That people like Yeah. 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 And so yeah. it'll you essentially like connect your account to say that you're an affiliate and then you can produce links that people click on, and whenever someone buys something based off of a link that you have provided, um, you get like a small, small, small commission mm -hmm. from it. So I've been like an Amazon affiliate since maybe April, um, and I really only made any like significant worth anything money in like November and December, but I've made in six months or so. Uh, it, actually, eight months of being an Amazon affiliate, I've made eleven dollars. Hey, that's money though. So, hey, we got, we fifty dollars total. Amazon store link in the mm, bio mm, in the description. Mm. Smash that thing. Listen, go buy fifty dollars. Fifty dollars total uh, as a uh, as a content creator. How about that? That's more than I can say. That's what I'm saying. I it's think that's more than I can say. It'll just add up. And like the thing is, like with time, persistence. People think it's a joke, but like for real, it's just gonna happen. And then people are gonna be like, "Oh, how'd you do it? Teach me," or, you know, right, right, blah 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 blah. blah. And then boom, it's too late. Right. I'm gonna be smoking a cigar with uh, on your yacht. That's all I gotta say. I agree. In Tampa. I agree. Drinking the high life. <laughs> I want to plug. Uh, we're starting a new YouTube channel. It's mostly my roommate, but we're helping. Where he oh, uh, yeah. speed he speed runs things in real life. So like he what? Likes, like what do you mean speed he's runs? He's like like returning a book to the library. That's actually pretty <laughs> funny. That's hilarious. So, yes. So he yes. he did it, and then he's gonna like narrate over it and like talk about how he could have improved his time, and he'll have like he, a timer yes. running. He, he, yes. he should be like totally serious and be like, "All right, there's a glitch here that you uh, they can really uh, uh, utilize that'll cut down your time by fifty percent." He's gonna do like bro, eating at Chili's or something. And he's bro, like, that's really waitress, okay. waitress started talking to me. That's really gonna eat into my time. <laughs> <laughs> just, just stupid bro, shit like that. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? 
it makes you think of like what happens in American Psycho when he says, "I gotta go return videotapes." That's what your roommate made me think of, of like him just like, do you know what? I, first of all, do we know what we're talking about here? American Psycho. Yeah, it's, it's been Bale. a while since I've seen it. So. I, I I have actually never seen it. Great man. Jerome, I told you to watch. You're in it investment banking, and you've I never know. seen it. Bank Psycho. Psycho. I told you. I know. I told you. Okay. You're gonna look at every like, business I, card someone sends like, you, I told and you, you. You won't be able to like make the. <laughs> The clear-cut reference you need to make. Listen, man, you know what I watched instead of American Psycho? I watched I Love You, Man. That's, like, next best thing, I think I I've guess. seen that one. I think it's the same movie. movie. It's the same it's movie. Basically, Paul Rudd. basically the same movie, exactly. exactly. Paul Rudd is Christian Bale. And uh, Jason Siegel. It's true. And they play Rush together. Yeah. Man, yeah, what's that? See? What's your favorite Paul Love Rudd movie? Part. Ant-Man. Anchorman. Mm. Oh, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's a good one. Uh, Friends. Mm. <laughs> Not a movie. <laughs> it's your favorite yeah, horror movie like is Friends. Counts. I feel like uh, it counts. Your, his favorite role. He's pretty role. funny in... Um, hold on. Okay, but do we consider uh, Paul Rudd like a comedy actor or a serious for actor? For sure, bro. He's, He's a comedy actor. Are you kidding me? I'd say both. I've seen him in very He's in few the Forty Year Old Virgin. He's he in role models. He's in role models. Have you have you guys seen uh, Wonderlust? No. It's yeah. I think I have. Is he in funny people? Apparently he's in knocked uh, up. He is knocked up. Probably. Dinner for funny Schmucks. People. He's in that Ironically, one. not very funny. Dinner for Schmucks wasn't that great. I haven't seen it, I'm pretty sure. It has some good moments. Oh, apparently he's he's a voice in the sausage party movie. If y'all oh, remember yeah. that one. All the all the big names uh, are in the big ones. Is he not in the time machine? No. He's not. You know, he's not. like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'd say he's best than Anchorman. Anchorman's my favorite. Anchorman that's... is probably peak Paul Rudd. Comedy. Really, all those guys, that's one of their best roles. So, Brian Fantana. Should we, uh, should we take a little bit of a break? Yeah, let's take you a little know, break. A little break. All right. I think so. I, I think We're I might get this... another one of these. So, um, this conversation is getting Alex? too hot. Mm. Yeah, let's take a quick break, uh, get a refill on whatever drinks you want. Um, we'll see you guys back after this short little ad break. Bye. 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 <laughs> And with that beautiful bass solo uh, bringing us in, it's, it's, we're back from the break. Thanks, Dan. I, I got um, the strawberry version of the Corona Hard Seltzer Limonada. So it's a strawberry limonada. Mm. Um, limonada. Three grams carbs, 100 calories, three grams of sugar. It says splash of real lemon and Mexican lime juice. Imported mm. from Mexico. Contains alcohol. And then it says beer. But I don't know what that means. Beer? This is not beer. It says beer right here, guys. Can you guys see what that? What is it? Seltzer? This uh, this light maybe it's fucking it up. You see that maybe beer? They just right they there. Just classify it as beer. Fuck it. I didn't know seltzers were beers. What's it could have that? like beer in it. It says uh, also contiene un por ciento de jugo. Just Juice. in case you didn't, you couldn't read. Yeah. It contains 1% of juice. It says that too there, but I felt like saying it in Spanish. Hmm. Anyway, guys. Anyway. We can't hear Jerome. Jerome's oh, trying, we to, lost trying Jerome. to do his... Uh, lost is he Jerome. muted? He's is not he muted. muted? I don't know if oh, his mic's no. broke. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. Jesus. Let me oh, just Jesus. interpret what you he's saying. hate when this happens. The him. mic says Cam Link 4K. So, I don't know what's going on. Oh, battery died. One second. Oh, there you go. Damn, um, bro. That's we'll, a, we'll keep that's it going. Damn we'll keep shame. it going. I can still we'll hear you right now, though. You just said battery died. I can still hear you. So, what's going on? He's fixing it. Oh, now we lost him. Yeah. So, uh, Whatever he did, broke it. No, keep going. Damn, this podcast is what, uh, dead air, I mean, dead I think air, it just air. shows the, the actual technical difficulties. Whatever you had it before, Jerome, you should go back. But uh, Alex, it seems like you uh, 
you wanted to say something. So well, I, I, I don't know if like he had any topics, any things to say. I mean, like it's it's like what's on your mind, you know? Like, <laughs> we're just trying to keep it going while Jerome's trying to fix his shit. Yeah, no, I mean, I got so okay. I wasn't here in Tennessee and Kentucky when the snowstorm happened. I would like to hear some more about the experience. Tell the people, did you did you do something fun? Did something bad happen? Power go out? Mm-hmm. Talk to me. Nothing Nothing bad happened for us. Um, Savannah went out and, and made a, a little snowman, which was pretty cool. Um, and uh, really, that was it. We really didn't do too much with the snow. She threw a couple snowballs at me. Our That's snow, fun. like you couldn't even make snowballs out of it. It we was so we had a dry. Lot. We had a ton, but it was so dry. You couldn't pack it. Dry snow. Dry snow. I, I asked the same thing, but it's a thing. Hmm. I don't know. Interesting. I uh, tried to sled down the hill with a piece of carpet, and it didn't work. And I gave up. That was about it. You got to use the top of a trash can. Don't have one. It, uh, sorry to interrupt people. Can, can you hear yeah. me? Oh, yes. Yeah, but it's Do a I little... sound significantly ass? Yes. 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 Yeah. Ask so here's the problem, okay? My, uh, my actual microphone died, mm. and when I, when I plug it in to power, to charge, it, I don't know, for some reason it interferes with the signal to the computer. So this mic is not actually doing anything right now other than just charging. So then I switched it to my AirPods, and I'm sure the AirPods sound like trash. Compared to your shout out Apple, yeah, it's still it's it's still fine. Like I feel like your three hundred dollar headphones sound bad. (laughs) I'm shook. (laughs) Hey, hey, man, they're actually five hundred and fifty dollars. Oh right, right, right. Okay, I take it. Could you imagine not to hate on Apple or anything like that? But like, think about how good that mic you have in front of you is. Hate on them. Yeah, they think about it. how good that mic is. Yeah, but in CISO, you gotta you gotta think this mic is two hundred and fifty dollars by yeah. itself. Sheesh. And this has to do two things. Damn. This has so, to be a mic and headphones. I don't know how I, how good I sound right now, but mine is not two hundred dollars. So you sound great. Well, Thanks. I feel like we Thanks. probably sound Thanks. very 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 similar. I think Dan um, Dan's setup is the most basis. expensive. By the way, right? Probably. I actually I actually don't know. I would say. Well, okay, my mic is cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, but then you add the focus right, and that's like $200 by itself, right? Yeah, and I've got a compressor and an EQ and a preamp. Mm. I'm are not even including uh, are we are we including the camera in this in this uh, situation? I guess so. In that case, okay, mine so is technically speaking built in. Cuz te- technically speaking, my uh my camera that I use as a webcam is $3,000. <laughs> Jesus Damn. Christ. H. Damn, bro. Okay. Anyway, so going back to the snowstorm, not to, you know, this was this was definitely Yeah, yeah, thing. go ahead. Sorry. So, I, not well, to derail. What I wanted to know, Jerome, were you affected with any kind of coldness over there in North Carolina? No. So, so uh, the first, first day that it snowed, which – that it snowed around me, which this was actually before the big snowstorm in Nashville. Um, I was in – Knoxville with my sister because I was still like, you know, in my quarantine period from COVID. And so when I was there, it snowed there pretty heavy. Like I'd say three to four inches, which for the South is like pretty heavy. Um, and, but then like, you know, it wasn't cold the next day. It didn't snow the next day. So literally within 24 hours, it was all gone. Then I came back to North Carolina and nothing, man not even close and like i don't know if you guys saw that news story of like the huge like backups on i-95 by richmond or something yep yep. people were like stuck in traffic for like 19 hours or something ridiculous but it was covered in snow it was covered in snow it was covered absolutely covered and richmond is only two hours from here it's so close um but for whatever reason like we got no snow at all so it's kind of crazy Dang, you just reminded me. I have to talk to some friends that I know in Richmond. I didn't ask them because they, they don't commute, though, so I don't think they had a problem. But mm-hmm. see, that that's what I was wondering yeah. about, Jerome. Yeah. Okay, cool. 
And I'm, you know, speaking over, of the news, t- tell me, talk I got to another, me. uh, tell me I about got another news. story. I want your guys' opinions on mm. what's on news. the news. So right there now. was, uh, there was an article that came out today uh-uh. about 15 colleges. Did you guys see this? No, I-, I think I know where you're going. Finish the sentence. There were 15 colleges that are being sued by former students for, uh, let's see violation of federal antitrust laws because apparently these uh 15 actually 15 schools plus uh university of pennsylvania so 16 top universities um are being sued because they colluded in determining the amount of financial aid that was awarded to top performing students they're being so they would so they would they would tell each other how much uh how much financial aid one school was offering a certain student so then to be less competitive the other schools would also offer the same package essentially screwing that student no uh, you yep. don't have any competition to yeah. uh, what are you so so give me i, I mean me are thoughts. we surprised that uh sometimes universities are communistic in nature given the uh philosophies that certain individuals may have in power <laughs> I know that's a that's a crazy ass claim. It makes no sense. I just wanted to say something, <laughs> something absolutely crazy. Okay. I did. I didn't read enough about the article to know that that's. Thank you for the specifics, first, Jerome. Um, well, here. Uh, and okay, so here are the specific schools. Oh, oh, oh. If, oh. if I may, it it calls you, them out. You may right. drop some names. Columbia. Ooh. Dartmouth. Cr- trash. This one's close to home. Duke. Ooh. Ooh. Trash. Georgetown. Trash. Massachusetts Institute of Technology, also known as MIT. Trash. Uh, they didn't North, let Spider Man in. Garbage. Notre, Notre Dame. Garbage. The University of Pennsylvania. Garbage. This one's close to home for you guys. Vanderbilt. Trash. Don't care. Uh, Brown, California Institute of Technology, uh, U Chicago, Cornell, no Emory, Rice, and Yale. Garbage. So, wow. Actually, legitimately, like a ton of Ivy Leagues and a ton of like top tier schools. Man, I don't care what they do. It's not in there. Can, it's like fuck you guys. Tennessee isn't in there. <laughs> Garbage. Yeah, I don't give yeah, a shit. I feel like I feel like the the rumor that I've always heard about Harvard is like if you're good enough to get into Harvard, like their endowments and you know financial financial aid is like big enough to where they can just cover the cost of mm-hmm. every student's attendance. My mom went to Harvard. That is the rumor I've always heard. What yeah, yeah. What'd you say? My mom went to Harvard. What? True story. Didn't even know that. No, you're lying. Sort of. No, you're lying. What's her LinkedIn? Uh, <laughs> probably Amy Dot Mallard. Name drop. Name drop. I guess. Whatever. I'm looking yeah. her up. LinkedIn. This Amy Ooh. Ballard is from uh, Raleigh Durham uh, Chapel Hill area. Is that her? Amy Mallard. M A L. Like the duck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know if we want to detract too much from this, but because like. Now we're on a tangent about it. Sorry, sorry, individual. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're getting on. No, no, no. I'm mean, talking about if Alex is a mind. If, if Alex is a mind, but what I was going to get back to is like, um, this goes back to, I mean, we could take it into the healthcare argument or insurance. Like the fact that like, so for you know, example, insurance, you can compare prices everywhere and you can know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like in healthcare, you can't compare prices. Like you don't know what X, this hospital is going to charge you or this hospital or like whatever. I think what, the whole point of why this is a scandal is the fact that like they're manipulating prices. Obviously these are financial mm-hmm. aid prices, but it's price manipulation. Basically the price yep. of you attending um, and the actual cost 100%. of attendance. It's the cost of attendance. 100%. Pretty much that's what they're ma- manipulating, which. But you know, the, the yeah. weird thing about this specific situation, right? Is like top universities in America are, ranked Mm -hmm. sure it's by like a third party organization like us news and week or whatever that like has its opinions and whatnot but they're ranked so you would assume that if everyone if all these colleges are giving the same scholarship packages across the board then me as a student i would just pick the higher ranked university Uh, maybe the higher ranked universities are giving less Mm -hmm. maybe that's the scenario i don't i don't know the details Maybe. But uh, it does seem fucked up. That. It's like you'd be like, you know, you're hoping you're going to get more from another school, but then they give you the same offer. So then it's like. Right. 
it's kind of messed up, man. Yeah, I think I think any university. And, uh, I, Go ahead, Dan. I think any university that charges you sixty thousand dollars a year can go fuck itself. It's too much money. Mm. It is. That's my university, bro. It's yeah. Way too much. But, I mean, that's what he's saying, though, bro. Like, Having gone to, to college, to you, <laughs> that's a rip off. Even if he's not right, you could just say fuck you. But Jerome's gonna get that money. He's gonna pay off them debt. That debt. You know. Hey, yeah, I'm gonna pay off that debt. Hell but yeah. I will say, like, uh, you know, these colleges do. Like, outside of these 16, like, in my specific instance, I have seen where colleges have been competitive in terms of financial aid, you know, because yeah. UNC initially offered me, you know, its, it's cost of tuition is $60,000 a year, stupid money, but it initially offered me ten grand in scholarship per year. Then I gave them, you know, the info that I had uh, been accepted to some other schools, um, and I was considering them because the package was higher, blah, 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 whatever. And they, without even responding to my email, they just upped my financial aid in like their system to 15000 a year. Hmm. And I was like, oh, shit. Okay. You're, you're a master negotiator. Yeah, you got to play the game. Negotiator, bro. Yeah. I didn't even need the NBA. I, I knew how to negotiate. Should have just been like, I mean, yeah, that's lesson, Harvard. Man. Harvard's giving me a full ride. I, I don't know if I could. <laughs> I don't know if I could go. Like, oh yeah, don't even, don't even respond. Here you go, f- free full ride. Go ahead. Yeah, dude, it would have been insane. But it's, I don't know, dude. It's sad because like all they're doing is like screwing, like screwing, potentially really exceptional students sure you know and a lot of times i feel like what's messed up in this situation is especially for like underrepresented students that like do really really well and work super hard to get into these like top universities if they can't afford it because of the financial aid they receive and then they end up having to go like to some regular old state school or whatever because that's what they can afford and it's like you're you're ruining, you're ruining it for everybody, mm. you know. Well, not everybody. If you're rich, you know. I will, I will say this. Um, having having that the name on your diploma, I don't think makes that big of a difference. I mean, like having the, no. I, that's what I think. I think, okay, Ivy League, like if you have that on your, on your diploma. Okay. Come on. Okay. Engineer. You're an engineer. Yeah. Okay. Maybe one day you'll become a hiring manager. Okay. <laughs> Tennessee versus MIT. I mean, come depends. on, it's not fair. I mean, like, I'm still going to okay, I'm gonna look okay. at Tennessee well, no matter what. A, I mean, it depends think it on the person. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on, wait, what? Yeah. Hold on, li- listen, hold on, listen, listen, listen. He's a grad from that. UT, so that's exactly. what he's saying. That's not fair. That's what he's saying, because he knows the system okay, and all okay. that. But what okay. I, w- I, I agree, Jerome, like, name brand, it does help. But I think the question is, is like, why, it's like well, why would someone from that school go to work where – those people don't go to work at, right? Like, so for example, like if you're like thinking like MIT, you know, they're going to go maybe like a a big company like Boeing. Mm -hmm. Well, Boeing already looks at engineers from everywhere, you know? And like, uh, and and so I guess the question is, it's like, even then the, the school, I think always helps for in terms of connections. Because the reality is some yeah. connections occur faster. It's like where hours. can you get a job? Exactly. Or what companies exactly. are recruiting at your school? But I know people from our school, man, they already work at like, you know, the like uh, at bigger, like at the biggest companies in the in, in, in the world. Like, you know, like Microsoft, yeah. all that, Google's like, I you know, people graduate Tesla. from our school. It's not as, yeah, exactly. Tesla, they, they all work there. So I think it's obviously because they're exceptional people. It's it's and, not just that it's yeah. it's also shared experiences. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. you you want to get people from the same college because you think that they yeah. probably had the same life experiences as you do, even though that's like just on the surface what you're looking at you on know the surface, I mean? right? Because we right. we all got different life experiences, right? Exactly. We all went to UT. So that's it's true. a talking point. So Look, Alex makes true. half the cans in America, and he went to UT. So. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Bro, so, I had – don't I, tell on, me on the last it's episode, not possible. I had a cup. On the last episode, I, who was on that? Was it Jerome? Jerome, were you I there for that? Yeah, yeah. Dan I don't remember that. But I don't remember this. You oh, were, you, I was, was there for the one with the ball cup that you had. Yeah. So The, the aluminum solo I, cup. There's an aluminum solo cup. This company buys aluminum from Logan, and uh, they make these 
in solo aluminum cups. solo it's cups. It's dope. Yeah, That's it's sick. Cool. It's okay. sick. Yeah, I showed it on another episode, so you just have to go back because I, I I can't grab it right now. I'm hanging with the guys. <laughs> hanging with We're the guys. Tight schedule. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't buy into right. it. I don't like it's the tough. elitism. You know, the other thing I was gonna say though is like, I still feel like there's a balance in between un so unrepresented people. I think like if financial aid was focused purely on socioeconomic need, this whole conversation of like, obviously there's certain numbers of I guess that's a whole discussion. But like, honestly, financial aid should just be based on the numbers, man, and <laughs> Here's another crazy thought. I think, um, Depending on the return on investment of your degree type, see, like, I just don't understand why a degree in something that doesn't pay as much still costs the same. Like, what the fuck? That's like, true. What the fuck is that about? Like, seriously, like, yeah. no, nobody that's will true. pay. Like, engineers, it makes sense you pay a certain amount because the professors cost the, a certain amount of time, the resources, right. all that stuff. Who in their right mind would then say the market value of your degree, you know, doesn't affect the cost of your education? You I know? agree. It should be based on like the market value of like the the For potential sure. salary or whatever. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of the issue that people get into is they they pick a major where they're following their passion, which great. Right. You know, yeah. Follow right. your dreams, whatever. No, nah, don't but do it. But then they get stuck in this cycle. <laughs> Your dreams are fresh. They get stuck in this cycle of debt because they're paying, you know, a total of sixty, eighty thousand right. dollars across four why, years why, for this degree where their salary is only like thirty. Why get exactly. a why, why degree exactly. in, in American history that costs you sixty thousand dollars whenever you can only get a job that's going to pay you twenty five grand at a museum just, that you're probably going to be most, working at? It's the ridiculous. But it's crazy. this is up to administrators of the universe. Like, I don't understand. This is a simple economics problem, and we've completely just discarded it. Like, it's just been completely discarded, right? right? We, we've, like, lumped every, we've lumped every degree into the same cost. Because, like, as expensive as your education is right now, Jerome, like, you know you're going to get paid an adequate amount to not yeah. have to. Like, even, like, friends who are in med school right now, you know, for example, Rot, right? Like, you know – once it starts working, it's going to start coming in. So it's like, it's like, uh, it's not a, you know, it's not guaranteed because nothing in life's guaranteed. But I mean, something like could happen. A, yeah. A for sure. very, very high probability that you can, you can pay back on those, on those debts. For sure. So it's like, I don't know why some of these like lesser paying degrees don't do that. But I do think the other issue and CISA earlier, you were talking about like socioeconomic status, I think one of the other issues is like in middle class America, there's so many families that in the college's eyes, they're like, oh, you make enough money. So we're not going to give you financial aid, but you don't know like their individual situation and like, you know what I mean? And they like, they can't make their money stretch far enough to afford their kids education. If, if that makes sense. So like, my family, for example, like we didn't have our green card when my sister first went to college. So because of that, she didn't get any of like any government aid, any school aid, and she actually had to end up paying out of state tuition. Mm. Right. And so instead of in state tuition, and we lived in Tennessee for at that point like sixteen years. That's what I was. That's just what I was about to say. Like it's not like you haven't been paying like. Not just sales tax, but income tax. You've been well, not income tax with t Tennessee, but like you know what I'm saying. Like it's not sales like, tax and yeah. yeah, and yeah. So property tax, Are property you, tax, you, exactly you property know. tax. Sixteen You're a citizen, years, bro. Right. Yeah. yeah. I am not still. You're still, no, still I, this is I'm, another. That makes me wait. mad. Another, I'm taking that to tangent. the highest court in the land. Another tangent. <laughs> another tangent. I mean, like it, it's. This dude is an American, bro. Yeah, dude, we're making it impossible for immigrants to successfully tough, make it. But that's way. insane to me. Listen, I I will say though, my sister is now a citizen and my mom is now a citizen. We oh, we oh. all applied for citizenship at the same time, and just it just so happened that their applications got processed before mine. So the two of them are like done with everything. I'm still waiting to hear back. I still got to go do like my interview and exam and all that stuff. And same with my dad. So we're. We're halfway there. I thought it was a know? package deal. And I think COVID, I think COVID really like messed everything up because a lot of these like government offices closed and all that. I, and so I, like normally, 
when you submit your application, it just takes six months to become a citizen. I don't, like, I don't mean to be a dick. After, I mean, if it takes 16 years, I don't think COVID yeah, affects it. <laughs> well, so that's the thing, right? Like, it takes, you know, say 12 years to get your green card. Then you have to wait an additional five before you can apply sure. for your citizenship. But then once you apply for citizenship, typically the turnaround has been like six months. Mm. Because of COVID, I've been waiting for in April. It'll be two years now. And I That's still true. Heard yeah. That, you know? it, it usually so, depends on the area that you're immigrating from, too, because like about like 10 years. very true. After 10 years that we had been living in the country, we became citizens. And like I didn't have to do everything like like you because like I was still uh, <clears throat> under eighteen. So because my parents passed through the process, we uh, got naturalized. Uh, my brother and I, my sister is yeah. born in the country, but uh, you lucked anyway, out. yeah, mm. it's but. uh it's definitely a tough process, man. They don't make it easy, which is right. why like you know I I hate the arguments of like uh, I don't know I don't know we don't need to get into immigration <laughs> right now. It's a that's a big thing, but I just. I hate the argument of they should make it so difficult do it to do right it the right way, way. Do, of right. like yeah because i'm like if you try to do it the right way it's so fucking yeah. hard why yeah. would anyone not do anything they can to find right. any loophole they can to yeah to speed up the process you know i get it i'm not saying it's the right thing to do but i'm saying i get it you know yeah that's crazy anyway that's mm -hmm. Well, we're going to get you there, buddy. <laughs> What'd you guys we're have to go get last you there? Let her rip. Sure. Let's go into it. Let's go into it. Let's go into it. Do you mind if I go first? Go ahead. For uh, sure. Since we got on the topic about like kids going to college, I'd say like if you have a, a kid or you're, you're thinking of having a kid, go ahead and start doing like a mutual fund or something for your child. That way they have a... Listen up, Cody Carroll. That way that they have... Uh, <laughs> I didn't dream about him last night. 18. There you go. That's Which a great it? one. Dan, go next and tell us about your dream. I had, about a dream. Cody Carroll. I had a dream. I was like playing dodgeball in like middle school or something. We had to pick teams and Cody so, was on the lineup. And I picked oh, Cody. <laughs> Easily picked Cody. Easy American. That man was an athlete. Yeah, bro. He's still probably an athlete, but the man was an athlete. Oh, yeah. Listen, listen, man. 4 two, 40 time can dunk a basketball at five mm -hmm. foot eight. Mm -hmm. Insanity. Athlete. Several, several. He might be. In, intro, intramural league champion times three, I think. Several. Yeah. Several, bro. He he had like 32 shirts. God dang. He won an intramurals <laughs> championship like 32 Jeez. Times. Dude, this he dude. Was, I think he was like one one t-shirt short of having like the University of Tennessee all-time record. Wow. Damn. Yeah. All I American. guess he's got to go to grad school or something, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, can get dude, that. he's got to go back just to win a couple extra. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. Extra. Dude, if he yeah, has – Major I mean, in intramurals. If he has a son, bro, that dude's going to be a beast, bro. Mm -hmm. That's oh, all yeah. I got to say. All right. Dan, Dan what was your last call, bro? of, like, Goku. I don't really have one. I don't. Nothing comes to mind. Eat some wings. I made some it's wings a, last night, and they were pretty good. What would you say? Dan's last eat, call was – Eat uh, wings. Was, eat wings. Eat wings. Because they're good. No, no. Dan, Dan's last call was uh, have dreams about your friends. Yeah, dream about your friends more. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. All right, I got one. Uh, my last call is invest in an Oculus Quest 2 and uh, add me as a friend. Oh, yeah. I should have said that. I, I, I made true on my promise to Dan the last episode. You I did. literally almost even purchased it during the episode. I told Dan I was going to buy one. I bought one. Dude, it is – I'm not going to lie. For the last three days, I have had a walking headache because of this thing. Because I play it every single night because it's fun as fuck. But the second I take it off, I'm so nauseous. I got this new game. Uh, it's called, like, Creed Ride, Rise to Glory. And it's based off of, like, the Creed boxing movies, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, the, yeah, the yeah. ones that are associated with Rocky. Um and it's got this function on it, right, where it, it wants you to, like, walk around the boxing gym. And literally all you do is you, like, press these two buttons on the controller and you swing your arms to walk. But, like, physically you're standing in place, right? But your character in VR is moving. And, oh, my God, it is the, the most, like, just mind fuck thing that could happen. The first time I did it, I literally screamed. And I almost fell over because I got so nauseous. 
I was just like, like, cause you're not moving, but you're moving, you know, it's, you, you just, you have to experience it. So that's my last call. Get an Oculus Quest 2. Add me as a friend. I'll add anybody. I think the future does is you're going to have to have the like treadmill thing to really do yeah. stuff with them. Yeah. That's my two cents. Yeah. It's All right. So. All right. I just got a weird ass message. So I don't know what the heck that's about talking about. Like, anyway, don't, it's a, some reservation, uh, reservation, um, details, but anyway, my recommendation guys is I think I've haven't been making very focused, stringent habits. Like what I'm trying to say is like, I think I, I do things and things works out. Yeah. I'm very capable. I'm smart, whatever. But like, I need to get into like more of a structure. I think I've been up in the air too long, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I think what I'm, my last call here is to really hone in and think about what habits you need to establish. And I'm not saying I'm going to come out of it. Like, I'm just saying like, I'm just realizing it and we'll see what happens. So that's it. That's all I got. Alex, you want to close this out, bro? No, I'm sure. All right. Uh, <laughs> you don't or you do? <laughs> yes or no? I have, I, have one, I have one final question. Shit, um, son. You, you know how, like, in life, if someone, like, blows a bubble, you can see the bubble? You know what I'm saying? Talk uh, you like, think, uh, what, blo what bubble? What are you talking about? Like a bubble? Like a, like a air bubble. Okay, sure. You know, like a, yeah, what about it? Um... You think fish can see bubbles under the sea? Yeah. I guess. <laughs> what a dumb question. How, do, how well do they see? That was good. How was well it. do they see? Hey, listen, I'm going to... We'll gonna have the answer for you next week. week. Animal, with an animal-related question that I want you to answer. I like it. That's it. That's it. All right. Well, uh, okay. Uh, thank you for joining us. I hope everyone enjoys what they're sipping on. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Goodbye.